Welcome to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Hello and welcome to Fresno FC Match Day. I'm Nick King at Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company in downtown Fresno. Los Zorros coming off another exciting game that finished yet again in a tie. Foxes led 1-0 at half and went ahead again 2-1 in the 61st minute on an Alex Cooper goal. But again, the lead was not safe. The visitors capitalizing with an equalizer in the 73rd minute. Here's a look now at the key moments, plus a look back at the best of the week from around the USL. Enriquez said to expect goals and celebrations, but it's Saldivar off the post. Oh, he hit it as square as he could. And Kyle Rainish in the background just shook his head like, well, okay, let's get it going the other way, boys. This is a really well struck ball. Got that. Cooper. Turned over. Rodolfo. Rodolfo again. He skied it. Get to Johnson. Johnson will have a go. He pulled it wide left of the post. I mean, Kai Green over and over again making the clearances. Pop back up. The net is empty. Corti's lost it. Rivero follow it is off frame. Laying up. Cooper. Johnson. Cooper again on the left hand wing. It's a nice build up here for Fresno. The cross is in an own goal. Fresno takes a one goal lead at the half hour mark. Beneficiaries now. Team play. This is everything that you could want out of your squad. Moving from the back in the middle, touches it inside, brings it back outside. What Jerson Etchbury was trying to do with Monday. Cooper! Oh goodness, it just falls apart. Donovan. Knocked it away. Cooper almost pulled off the dribble of the year. Fuck, you have to have those runs to give yourself coverage. They weren't doing it. Quintanilla. More space here. The rip is in! Jesus Enriquez with an epic curler. Ball one on the challenge. Drops down to Quintanilla. Does a good job. Moments ago, the ball gets his first yellow. He does. Uh, have a red. Turned over. Chance now. Laid off. The shot is in by Cooper. The left side was the loose side in the first half. Kai Green, very uncharacteristic. He usually does such a good job keeping hold of the ball, and you can see it just too willy nilly in the back. Ball bounces out. Alex Cooper, we talked about. Barrera swinging in, knocked down by Corti, turning, Rivero still alive, kicked away Donovan, the follow headed away from the line. Hey. Lifted toward Jones. Another breakthrough for RGB! Quintanilla! Once again, Nicholas Brea stepping up. We've seen him all night long. How about the ball? Have found an MVP in Jordan Jones. Cuevas drops away. Chiva Cuevas caught by Corti. Walton, Rivero, after it's still, it's full time. RGB pick up their first road point of the season. Adam Smith and Fresno have to settle for one. Demente about to come in for Rodolfo, who's about to get under this ball in the area. He does. Nice little back pass, Johnson, and the equalizer evens the game in one. Jamal Johnson, his fourth goal of the season. So far, here's the Roughnecks, though. Best run that they've had all game. Controlling it, shooting, and scoring. Pass slid away. Now a chance, Whoa. a rip is in! Efrain Alvarez! He's got my man in the match for sure. 
Looking for Mare. He's onside. Monarchs have a chance. Mare shot and goal. Back of his heel. Oh, what a ball here! It's the Glockwin! To the right side, blocked out of harm's way. Allows Restrepo to get back in. Kassan has a chance! What a save by Restrepo! It was another fantastic save by Diego Restrepo. One delivered in dangerously to the pet of the area. Oh. Great save by Maxine Crepo off that close range header. Oh my goodness, that was an absolute terrific save. Get him. Cashier, Cashier from distance. Pushed up and over the crossbar. A good look, and that one had eyes for the back of the net. Gets away from his defender, now sends it in towards goal. Headed save, Marcinkowski. Rebound won't go either, and Reno able to clear it away. Comes to Walker. Walker will have a go! It's a great save by Williams to pop it over the bar. Reminder, we want to make your fandom of Fresno FC a part of this show. We're searching social media for those hashtags, Somos Zoros, Built for Fresno, and We Are Foxes. We'll be using these kinds of pictures and videos heading into each commercial break. Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. We'll be right back after these short messages. Welcome back to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Okay, joined now by Fresno FC head coach Adam Smith. Coach, it's been two games since we saw you. There was the loss in San Antonio Saturday. Then the draw Wednesday. What can you tell us? Uh, what, what goes through your mind thinking about both those two games? Well, we'll start with Saturday. Um, we should have been 2 0 up after 13, 14 minutes, something like that. Um, you know, I think Pedro with the header has to do better. He knows that. And um, Rodolfo certainly has to, has to do better than, you know, has to score really in, in, in that instance. Um, so that's, that's where it's disappointing and this is where the margins are, you know, you're 2-0 up away from home and that changes the game completely. Uh, instead, you allow them to get in the, in the game and then we do, we do great to come back in the game and we, we have a lot of chances in the second half and I was pleased with our overall performance. Uh, again, a bit of bad luck, you know, the ball comes off the back of your goalkeeper and into the goal, could have gone anywhere, it goes into the goal and uh, you lose the game 2-1. So, and their keeper makes two or three great saves in the second half. So, disappointing that we, we lost, but um, still, still showed a lot of character in the game, um, but it, it proves that you have to take your chances. So that's San Antonio. Um, moving on to last night, um, I was convinced we were going to get three points before the game. Uh, we should have got three points. I was very disappointed with our first half performance and I let the players know that at half time. It wasn't good enough. You know, despite the fact we were 1-0 up at half time, I thought we were playing one of our poorest halves of the season. They responded very, very well. Uh, they put in a very good second half performance from an attacking standpoint. Scored a good goal. Created a lot more chances. But um, 
couple of defensive laps in concentration and again it goes back to still struggling on that right hand side of, of defence you know since losing Zach um, and we've had Beto play out of position there we've had Mickey play out of position there and we've had to get a lone player in and you know who did great against San Antonio but he's a young player he's he's um, he's just fresh out of college he's got lots of ability and he will be fine but you know it's this is what you have to deal with and it's it's just unfortunate that if you look at quite a few of our goals we've been conceded on that side so i got to block, block it off i got to fix it and uh, get the players to, to buy into what we're doing and uh, and then we can uh, avoid those those silly goals reading what you had to say after this latest tie it seemed like you were as frustrated as you've been that it was again a tie am i right about that yeah I have to be honest, Wednesday evening was the most frustrated I've been out of all the games thus far. I, I still believe in the group, we, we, and I'm not just saying that, you know, we have, a, we have a good bunch of guys and they all want to win just as much as me, so that, that's healthy. But there was no reason to, to, to throw the, the, the two extra points away on Wednesday night. You know, we're that close, right? we're that close. and. Uh, uh, you know, you fix one or two little things and, and, and all of a sudden you, you're in a really healthy position. So that's what we have to do. We still have a lot of games, games to go. Um, the next two games are tough. And, you know, in some ways it takes the pressure off the players a little bit. If we come out with anything from this weekend, we'll, we'll be delighted. What we have to make sure, and this is where the guys need to be, and myself, need to stand up and be counted, Last thing I'll ask you about, because you guys do have a Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup game in between those two, um, how do you approach that? It's an interesting one. I've approached it at a prior club as an assistant. We've approached it two ways. We've approached it with we're putting our best team, what we think is our best team on the field, and we're going to go out, we're going to win, and then progress. We've also approached it with we're going to you know, put like a... Um, the, the, the guys that haven't been getting minutes and give them a run out so that they can stay fresh. And it's worked both ways, you know, it's worked because with, you know, but it's also punished us as well by not, not making it through in a round. So I think I've got to look at a balance. You know, I want to give players an opportunity. Uh, there are players that have worked hard every day in training that, that, that need to, to get some minutes to stay sharp and, and, and be when called upon, you know, be ready to play. Um, but at the same time, I've got to look to, you know, I want to progress in the competition and, and move on from there. We would like to make you, the community, a big part of this show as well by sharing your social media posts from the matches and the hoopla before and after the matches. The Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show will be right back after these short messages. Welcome back to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Okay, time to meet another one of the Foxes. We've got Danny Barrera with us. Danny, born in Columbia. What are your memories of living there as a kid? I came here when I was seven, so as much as you remember when, until you're seven years old, so not much, but sitting around with my classmates at lunch and things like that, small memories, huge difference than when it was like when I got here. Can you remember playing soccer in Colombia? I actually never played, surprisingly. In my situation, my mom was very, very intelligent. And she was all about studies and, and getting an education even though we didn't know that soccer was in our blood, really. It all started in elementary school when we first moved here. It was the elementary Olympics. So it was, you go and do different stations here and there, and there was a soccer dribble. And my brother, he played maybe a little bit in Colombia, but not much, maybe a year or so. He did the soccer dribble thing, uh, didn't even speak English at the time. <laughs> And the person that was monitoring that, that station was actually a club coach for a big club in, in Southern California. And he got it the fastest time and, and he asked him like, who are you basically? After that, he made that team and 
surely I followed in his footsteps and started trying to play here and there and, you know, fell in love with it. And so you, when you guys moved here, then you were in Thousand Oaks in Southern California. At what point did you realize that you had the talent, that it was something that you wanted to pursue? Yeah, I would say probably uh, after a few years playing and, uh, you know, it felt natural to me. And I went out with this English coach, super intense, and he kind of showed me, you know, the game in a different light and, and my full potential. I mean, after a year with him, I just was learning at such a high rate. And I really, you know, started taking it more seriously at that time. And through this English coach and the training that he, you know, instilled in me and uh, all that, I ended up getting invited for the national team, the residency program which is a high school program in Florida, uh, Bradenton, the IMG Academy. And uh, I was the, one of the first 10 to get invited. And uh, so I went to high school in Florida with a lot of you know, faces we see today, uh, Josie Altidore and Breck Shea, a lot of uh, US national team guys now. And that was basically, my high school uh, was living with these amazing, the best top players in the country and traveling the world and playing in tournaments and going to school together. Danny, could you tell us, are there any passions or secret skills that you have off the field? Well, I mean, I, I enjoy golfing and, and really, I mean, most soccer players do a lot of different things they're good at, you know? Uh, whether it's small things, uh, ping pong or, you know, disc golf or whatever. I think it's just in our nature that, you know, when you pick something up, it's we pick it up quick. So I, I wouldn't say there's something particular, but more like a well-rounded, you know, little bit of this, little bit of that. Cooking, I'm actually passionate about cooking as well. What's your specialty? Uh, eggs, poached eggs. <laughs> Anything eggs, actually. Like hashes and things like that. Breakfast, I guess. If you're going out to eat or if someone is making food for you, what's your perfect meal? Well, depends. If I'm in season or I'm, I'm off season. Off season. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Peruvian food. It's, they have so much different variety of cuisine and, you know, they have a dish, Lomo Saltado. It's called, it's traditional Peruvian dish, but it's so simple and it's just rice, filet mignon steak, um, and French fries, which is, you know, random for a South American country. <laughs> But they mix it with onions and tomatoes and stuff, but that's something that I really enjoy when I, when I get a chance to eat it. What else would be interesting to know about Danny Barrera? That's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty uh, chill guy, you know, I have my dog and uh, just take care of my dog. And What kind of dog and what's the name? It's a Labrador Pointer mix. Super intelligent, human-like really. I got her when she was like four or five weeks old and you know we we train and then sometimes we have most of the day to rest or so it was good I had time to train her and things and she's been with me you know from North Carolina to here she's taking flights to Texas to Atlanta uh, to Indiana so she's been around and um, yeah I mean it's just really me and my dog uh, just traveling and playing. We would like to make you, the community, a big part of this show as well by sharing your social media posts from the matches and the hoopla before and after the matches. The Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. We'll be right back after these short messages. Welcome back to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Take a look at the Western Conference standings. Today's opponent, Real Monarchs SLC, in first with 19 points. Phoenix Rising FC and Sacramento Republic FC both a point behind. All three of those teams just one loss. Fresno FC in ninth, 
with still only a few points back of fifth. Just so many draws sitting with that two, two, and six record. Los Zorros upcoming schedule. Today's game in SLC here on CW59. Wednesday, Foxes hosts a Lamar Hunt US Open Cup second round game. It will be at Clovis High's La Monica Stadium, not Chukchansi Park. It is against Orange County FC of the NPSL. 10 days later, May 26th, Foxes at Orange County SC. That game on CW59. As is the following Saturday, when Fresno FC hosts S2, and the Saturday after that, June 9th, in Reno. And that is our show. Thanks for watching. Enjoy today's game from Salt Lake City. Foxes looking to break through and put another three points on the board.